This is a year where we might be able to see several different ear rots appear depending on where you are in the state. Um, in southern parts we might see Fusarium or Aspergillus ear rot, and in the northern part conditions are more favorable for Diplodia or Gibberella ear rot. These are two ear rots that you can find by walking through the fields as corn is starting to senesce. You'll see bleached husks, and if you see the bleached husks, just go ahead and pull back the husk and look for some fungal growth on the cob. Now with gibberella ear rot, sometimes you'll see the fungal growth more at the tip, but we can find it throughout the ear. One of the ways that we distinguish between gibberella ear rot and diplodia ear rot is by the color of the mold. Diplodia will have kind of a white fungal mat, whereas gibberella usually has some of a pinkish color to it. One of the things to consider is that depending on the hybrid or the environmental conditions, the pink color may not be as distinguishable in the field. When you're prioritizing which fields to scout, you want to make sure that you're choosing fields that were experiencing cool, wet conditions at silking. Those would be most likely to experience problems with gibberella ear rot. Now there can also be contributing factors such as insect feeding. Especially with gibberella ear rot, we know that fields that have western bean cutworm or earworm problems are going to be more likely to see gibberella ear rot. It's very important to determine the difference between gibberella and diplodia ear rot because the fungus that causes gibberella ear rot produces mycotoxins. We specifically call these mycotoxins deoxin of alanil. Sometimes you'll hear referred to as vomitoxin and it can also produce zealuronone. Both of these mycotoxins are extremely toxic to swine and can be problematic to other livestock as well. So we want to make sure we're identifying the fungal mold correctly so we don't have problems with feeding and grain storage later down the road. And though there's nothing that we can do to minimize the impact or reduce the amount of mold on the ears now, we can minimize the impact of mycotoxins should they exist in the grain. You want to make sure you know what fields have ear rots because they need to be the first fields that you harvest. Even though corn can be at black layer and drying down, until that corn gets below 15% moisture, the mold can continue to grow on the ear, and if it's growing, it can produce mycotoxins. Once these fields are harvested, you want to make sure that you're storing that grain separately from any quality grain, and you want to make sure that it's dried down below 15%. Oftentimes, growers will put away and store grain, and if fines or foreign materials cause hot spots to appear in the bin, moisture can creep up above 15%, and should that occur, the fungus can continue to grow and produce mycotoxins even though it's in storage.